Right, this is the 150 litre quick cut geezer. When I open up, I'll show what I've done. First of all, I made a little bit of a heat isolation here that just fits over the thermostat like that and just seals it a bit. And I've made this here. There's a little probe there, temperature probe, if I take it out. There we go. That comes with the Sonoff temperature measurement unit, which I'll show just now. I just took some uh, tin foil and folded it over and then put this. It's a kind of a putty glue kind of thing that sits. I tested it on the metal first and it sits quite nicely. So it seals it and it isolates it quite nicely and I can pull it in and out now if I like, if I need to replace it. All right, so let's close that up. So that's uh, this metal flange, flange is very hot. You can feel it because this is directly onto the water on the other side. So this is ice cold. Well, not ice cold, but it's cold. And this one is pretty hot. So that's pretty close to the real temperature of the water. Not quite, but pretty close. I'll show you just now. Now it uses an RJ9. It comes through to an RJ9. It's only one and a half meter, so I extended it. It's only three cores that's needed, so I just uh, wired it in there. Here's an extension, 5 meter extension cable. The specs say you can extend this up to four, uh, 60, 60 meters. Right, that comms cable comes in here. I crimped my own RJ9 on there and plugged it in. You could have cut it off and took that little black piece, just connected it and plugged it in, that's fine. It's showing 55.7 now. My geyser thermostat is set at just under 70 degrees, 70. Uh, this one went to 59 so that's as close as it gets so I know 59 is probably 66 in reality so it's pretty close really close so I can work on this to give you an idea I found out that if it drops to about 40 it's still fine to shower in it because it's probably 45 somewhere there uh, and I can work with that I'll show on the app how that works now just by the way the um, live comes in, that's live in, that's live out. This goes to the auto change over switch. That is my smart load input and then obviously just to switch the power. If the smart load kicks in, it gives it power, it switches over. This is the default state. If there's power on both, then that one will be the default, the um, smart load. If there wasn't any smart load, I'm going to set this thing within certain times of the day in other words afternoon let's say five o'clock my smart load stops at three i don't let it go on after three i don't have that many panels um, so from five to seven i'll put this one on if the temperature is below a certain temperature so if there wasn't any any smart load this will be below 45 or something like that i'll probably make it 49 or so so it's if it's below 49 it's going to kick on and if it goes above 50, let's say, it'll switch off. So I can then have the grid heat my geyser according to temperature. If I want it on in the morning quickly for a hair wash, I might make it 40, a little bit less. Uh, so I'll take a 5 to 6 in the morning. If it's uh, below 39, it must switch on. If it gets above 40, it must switch off and only between 5 and 6 in the morning. So those are the settings and that's how I'm going to do it. So you get a timer effect, but you also get temperature so that you don't guess the temperature that you want to set it on. This is the Ewe Link app. 150 litre geyser, I gave it a name. I don't switch it on here. This is the way to switch on the geyser with a grid. I can see the temperature there. That's live, 46.3. Let's go in. I can switch there, I can toggle it on as well and off, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to do the set in the middle. Then you've got your time settings as well as your temperature settings. So 6 in the afternoon till 7.30. If it's higher than 45, it switches off. Lower than 44, so anything from 20, 30, 40, it'll switch on between this effective period time set. So that one will be when there wasn't any smart load then that will switch on via grid in the morning it's just washing hair i don't want to make that uh, geezer too hot 
So the temperature is 38 in reality, probably somewhere above 40. It's still good enough. We could even shower with that. Um, so it's a bit lower just to save on, on power, but also so that the geyser has got some um, space for the heating of, of the smart load. So this is the kind of thing. It's time plus temperature. Now you're actually going to set it accurately to switch on and off. At the bottom there's schedule, which I don't do. That's just a time schedule, which doesn't make sense because you got the feature of the uh, temperature now. You'll see the history there. This is the 24-hour history, but you can go into one day. It's last seven days I've had it for about six days, so you can see the peaks there. It was cloudy here. It was very. It was rainy actually, and there it was smart load that heated it up to 58. And my smart load, he did it up to 57, 57. And in that scenario, we don't even heat the geyser in the morning. It's still hot enough. So you'll see in the morning, there is probably where we showered at 40. There is in the morning, just before it dropped was when we showered 44, and then it dropped. So that's a good temperature, and it's a nice way to see it.